Burt Middleton here. The Gout Killer. Hey, it's been a little while since I did a video for you, and you've probably been hearing a lot about the new gout guidelines from the American College of Rheumatology. And there is a new kind of like a blog post out by Medscape that goes over the highlights of that. It's kind of like a 16 slide blog post that I felt compelled to review because there is a lot of information in there that runs contrary to what I have come to understand is the way to get over gout. And I wanted to do this little review of this so that you could see another side of the story and make your own decision from there. Do your own research. So um, it's 16 slides long. I'm going to go through each of them, um, read it to you, review it a little bit. Um, it's probably going to end up being a four or five series long uh, video series. Um, and I get very passionate about a lot of this information or misinformation. And, but this time I'm just going to kind of keep myself in control and I am going to deliberately just offer another side to the story. So here we go. <laughs> New Gout Management Guidelines, a quick and easy guide. Brett S. Stetka, MD, Jonathan K., MD. MDs are required to have no training in diet or nutrition, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, just to set the record straight there. Uh, this is slide one of 16. New Gout Management Guidelines, a quick and easy guide. For the first time since its founding 78 years ago, the American College of Rheumatology, ACR, has released guidelines for the management of gout. The recommendations were released in two parts. Part one addresses non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic treatment approaches to hyperuricemia, including detailed dietary measures, and part two advises on therapy and anti-inflammatory prophylaxis of acute gouty arthritis. To help integrate the new recommendations into your clinical practice, we've highlighted and summarized the primary management suggestions put forth by the ACR Task Force Panel, TFP. Now, just a quick thing here to note, detailed dietary measures. So since MDs know nothing about diet and nutrition, who put together these detailed dietary measures? That's a Good question to find out, and we'll get into a little bit more of it, I think, on slide eight. But we're moving forward here. I'm going to try to keep these video, this video sequence as concise as I can. Number two of 16, clinical evaluation. When evaluating a patient for gout, the ACRTFP recommends a thorough history and physical examination gauging the frequency and severity of attacks and assessing for signs such as TOFI and synovitis. Great idea. Of course, you need to know the history of the whole um, gout occurrence. But what is kind of interesting is that there are many questions that need to be asked that uh, that doctors don't always ask. Um, you know, a few of the most important ones are how hydrated are you staying? What has been your diet over the last 20 years? <laughs> we'll get into diet on the next slide. Um, how are your breathing habits? Do you snore at night? It all plays into whether you're getting gout or not. So let's move on to slide three of 16. And this one is non-pharmacologic man management in established gout. Now we're going to spend probably the most time on this one. The TFP recommends a number of non-pharmacologic interventions aimed at lessening attack risk. risk lowering urate levels and promoting general health while preventing the development of comorbidities. Dietary recommendations are divided into three groups. Foods to avoid are organ meats, i.e. sweetbreads, liver, foods containing high fructose corn syrup, and excessive use of alcohol. Foods to limit are large portions, of, large portions or concentrations of meat and or seafood. Uh, naturally sweet fruit juices, sugar, desserts, and salt all fall into that category. And foods that are encouraged include low-fat or no-fat dairy and vegetables. 
Weight loss in those who are overweight, smoking cessation, and exercise are also recommended as general lifestyle health considerations in patients with gout. In, adv in advanced gout or during periods of high disease activity, all alcohol should be avoided. Now, there are several parts to this. The first thing is in promoting general health, preventing the development of comorbidities. Well, MDs know a lot about drugs and diseases. Now, shouldn't we be more focused on staying healthy in the first place and not getting gout at all? Okay, we don't want to just keep the disease and, and um, just cover it up with a bunch of drugs, right? Okay, so promoting general health. Now, is an MD going to tell you how to be healthy? No, they're going to they're going to help you when it's when when you've mismanaged your health basically. Okay, so if you're into mismanaging your health then that's it. Okay, I said I was going to stay under control here um, while preventing the development of comorbidities. Comorbidities are um, when you're getting too many different drug interactions, you know, like you can't take corticosteroids on diabetes, it makes it worse. When you have chronic um, K, um, CKD, chronic kidney disease, um, you shouldn't be taking um, any kind of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I know this because I have one kidney. Um, so there, it's kind of like, okay, we're talking about promoting general health now, and we're you know, trying not to take too many drugs for all the other diseases we have. Dietary recommendations are divided into three groups. Foods to avoid our organ meats. Organ, who eats organ meats? When was the last time you ate sweetbreads? When was the last time you ate liver? Okay, what really should be in that place is highly processed foods. Like all the foods that you buy in the grocery store that, are, that come in boxes, bags, cans, and bottles. Those are what, are, what is causing gout fast food is causing gout. And that goes along with high fructose corn syrup. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, all of those kind of soft drinks, soda pops, um, probably most of the energy drinks, high fructose corn syrup. A lot of the fruit juices, high fructose corn syrup. Of, of any one thing that has caused gout to double in the last two decades in the United States, it's high fructose corn syrup, if you want to pin it on any one thing. Um, excessive use of alcohol, beer is the worst, uh, hard alcohol is probably second, red wine, there's a lot of antioxidants in red wine, resveratrol, you've heard about it in the news. Resveratrol will, is, is rather helpful to your overall cellular health. So avoid alcohol, good idea, can we say hangover? Um, same reason you get hangovers is you know kind of contributing towards the whole thing in gout. Foods to limit are large portions and concentrations of meat and seafood. This is relatively true, but it's important to realize that you need to be eating, like when you're eating beef, it has to be grass-fed beef. You know, this commercially raised beef, they fed it corn, the cows are in it in an incredibly acidic state right before they kill them, and then those fats are damaged fats, and you know, commercial red meat is definitely not good. Different kinds of seafood, there's all kinds of good seafoods. There's a lot of problems with seafoods these days um, in terms of mercury and all kinds of heavy metal poisoning and that kind of thing. But what is really important to, to realize, and they said it right, large portions. When you eat meat or fish, six ounces at the most. Four ounces is better. You know, maybe two or three times a week. Um, naturally sweet juices, we talked about that. Sugar, desserts, and salt. Sea salt is really good, lots of minerals, lots of trace minerals, but just regular sodium that you get as table salt. It's in too much processed food that's part of the big problem there. Um, the foods that are encouraged, now this is the biggest fallacy that has screwed up millions and millions and millions and millions of people for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Our bodies are made of protein and fat. Okay, we need fat. We need good fat. We need good fats to activate all kinds of different minerals and water-soluble vitamins. In the fats are the essential fat-soluble vitamins. We need fats. We need good undamaged fats, not trans fats that are found in processed foods, not all kinds of damaged fats that are like rancid oils. 
biggest thing that has screwed up millions and millions and millions of people. You need fat. Don't eat low fat. Eat good fat. Good fats and oils. It helps the kidney health, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, weight loss, that's a no-brainer. I always ask people, how much did you weigh at age 18, and how much do you weigh now? If there's a big difference, I mean, that's, that's an obvious reason why you're getting gout. Smoking, duh. Okay, exercise. Okay, exercise. Our bodies were designed to hunt and gather. <laughs> Sitting at a desk like I'm doing right now is not what we were designed to do. Get out there, get your exercise. Okay, I'm going to stop this video. This is going to be part one of the Gout Killer Review of the American College of Rheumatology New Gout Guidelines. And we'll pick it up on slide number four in the next video.